Hi. Bruce Willis is a famous American film actor, producer, and musician. He had a long and successful career in Hollywood, which was recently interrupted by illness. In this video, we will talk about Willis's journey from a stuttering boy to a movie legend. How Bruce Willis lives and how he spends his millions. Walter Bruce Willis was born on March 19, 1955, in the German city of Edar Oberstein. He later abandoned his first name per his agent's advice. His father, David, served in the American unit in West Germany, where he met his German wife, Marlene. In 1957, Willis Sr.'s term of service ended, and the family moved to the American city of Carneys Point, New Jersey. The Willis family has grown over time. Bruce has two younger brothers and a sister. The siblings would constantly tease each other, so our hero developed a wonderful sense of humor since childhood. He also did well at school, but suffered from severe stuttering. The boy also used his impairment to cheer up his friends, but he didn't want to be seen as inferior, so he asked for a role in a school play. Then, it turned out that when Willis plays on stage, stuttering disappears. Thanks to this, he fell in love with acting more and more. By the way, the future Hollywood star battled his stuttering for many years and finally won. In high school, Willis became the chairman of the school board. He could have easily become an excellent student, but he believed that the main thing in school was fun, not study. After receiving his diploma, Bruce got a job as a security guard at the Salem Nuclear Power Plant, then worked as a corporate bus driver of the DuPont Chemical Company, where his father also worked, and even tried himself as a private investigator. But he realized that none of these jobs could compare with acting, so he enrolled in the drama program at Montclair St. University. However, after his first year in 1977, Willis moved to New York, where he regularly auditioned for various theaters. He earned his living by working as a truck driver, bodyguard, waiter, and bartender. And in his spare time, he played the harmonica and performed with his band. Only years later, Bruce completed his education in absentia. At first, our hero received only cameo roles in little-known plays and TV productions. Willis was invited to his first film work by the casting director right during his shift at the bar. It was the thriller The First Deadly Sin. The young actor didn't refuse to shoot in advertising, for example, in a commercial for Levi's. His breakthrough happened in 1984 when Bruce came to audition for the lead role in the TV series Moon Lady. Don't I know you? No, I don't think we've met. Nah, wait a second. Can't fool me. The eyes don't lie. Not these babies. Photographic. See something once and it's locked in there forever. Really? With a punk hairstyle in camo and an earring in his ear, Willis didn't fit to play a private detective at all. But producer and screenwriter Glenn Gordon Karen still saw potential in him. The actor's temper strongly resembled his character, the same merry fellow and joker. Once, Willis was even arrested after a noisy party at his house. By the way, this wasn't the first arrest for him. At 19, he was detained for possession of prohibited substances. For his work in Moonlighting, Bruce Willis received an Emmy and a Golden Globe, and the payout for the series reached $50,000. He starred in the show for five seasons, and a lot has changed during this time. The actor released a music album that reached number 14 on Billboard 200 charts, appeared in episodes of other TV series, Miami Vice, and The Twilight Zone, and received roles in the films The Return of Bruno, Blind Date, and Sunset. Initially, he played comedic characters, but later put on a different hat, playing his most famous character, policeman John McClane, in the action movie Die Hard in 1988. Mayday, mayday, anyone copy? Attention, whoever you are, this channel is reserved for emergency calls only. The f Lady, do I sound like I'm ordering a pizza? This role was offered to such recognized movie stars as Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, Harrison Ford, and Richard Gere, but all of them refused for various reasons. The producers invited Bruce as a last resort and weren't wrong. Most of the jokes in the film were his improvisation. 
At the same time, Willis wasn't even mentioned on the first official posters so as not to scare away fans who were skeptical of the TV actor. After the success, our hero agreed to play in the following parts of the franchise, and the producers, in turn, allowed him to improvise as much as he wanted. Die Hard brought Willis worldwide fame and a $5 million paycheck, but also health problems. Per the director's idea, all gunshots had to sound at full force, and during the filming of one of the scenes, the actor practically lost hearing in his left ear. It is also noteworthy that the action movie was shot in the evening and at night, since during the day, Bruce was busy filming Moonlighting. After the resounding success of Die Hard, working on the detective series became more complicated. In the first seasons, Bruce was just grateful for the opportunity. But later, he wasn't satisfied with the fact that he came second in the credits after his partner Sybil Shepard. The relationship between the two didn't go well from the very beginning, although the press persistently pushed the rumor of the actors dating. In reality, Bruce had a stormy affair with a young actress, Demi Moore, whom he met on August 5, 1987 at the premiere of the film Stakeout. On November 21st of the same year, they already got married in Las Vegas in the presence of only friends and relatives and later had a lavish ceremony and reception in Los Angeles. They had three daughters, Rumor, Scout, and Tallulah. In 1989, Bruce appeared in the military drama In Country, for which he was nominated for a Golden Globe. He voiced Baby Mikey in the movie Look Who's Talking, receiving $10 million for it and also presented his second music album but failed to top the success of his first record. Next came the movies The Bonfire of the Vanities and the sequels to Die Hard and Look Who's Talking. For these three films, Willis received a total of $22.5 million. Bruce also added thrillers Billy Bathgate and Mortal Thoughts and action films Hudson Hawk and The Lost Boy Scout to his filmography. For his role in the latter, Bruce received $14 million but made an unpleasant impression on director Tony Scott. The actor would constantly dictate his terms and change whole pieces of the script. In 1992, the audience saw Willis in the crime thriller The Player, as well as the fantasy comedy Death Becomes Her. Then came the films Striking Distance, Color of Night, Nobody's Fool, and North, as well as Tarantino's cult classic Pulp Fiction. Go, go, go. Whose motorcycle is this? It's a chopper, baby. Whose chopper is this? Zed's. Who's Zed? Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead. Bruce really wanted to star in this film and auditioned for the role of Vincent Vega, so he was very upset to hear the rejection. Therefore, when the director offered him the role of boxer Butch, he gladly agreed and even gave in to reduce his fee to $800,000. In 1995, the actor starred in the dystopia 12 Monkeys and presented the third part of Die Hard with a Vengeance, for which he received $15 million. He earned a little more, $16.5 million, in the action movie Last Man Standing in 1996. In addition, Bruce voiced in the cartoons Beavis and Butthead, Do America, and Bruno the Kid. Because of Willis's high fees, Luke Benson was hesitant to invite him to the main role in the fantasy thriller The Fifth Element. However, he surprised the director by agreeing to rather modest conditions by his standards simply because the plot interested him. Lilu Dallas Multipass. Yeah. Multipass. Lilu uh, Multipass. You know this Multipass. Lilu Dallas, my wife. We're newlyweds. Just met. Multipass. You know how it is. Bump into each other. Sparks multi happen. Yeah, she knows it's a Multipass. Yeah. After that, Bruce starred in the film The Jackal together with Richard Gere. It was difficult for them to work together, so the two famous actors vowed never to act together again. In 1998, along with not very successful action movies Mercury Rising and The Siege with a payout of $5 million, Bruce presented another movie hit, Armageddon, which became a box office record at the time. I don't know if you have to go. We can all just sit here on Earth, wait for this big rock to crash into it, kill everything and everybody we know. The United States government just asked us to save the world. For his work, Willis received $14.8 million and the Golden Raspberry Anti-Award. At the same time, our hero became the first actor to play in the video game Apocalypse. Using attachable sensors, the creators managed to capture his movements and facial expressions, for which the company paid Bruce more than $1.2 million. 
In 1998, Bruce and Demi's marriage came to an end. Their union was called exemplary for a long time. For the sake of their daughters, the couple agreed to arrange their schedules so that they could take turns working in movies, but this led to them growing apart. Willis started cheating on his wife, he was rumored to have affairs with many of his on-set partners. And after the divorce, he dated Spanish model Maria Bravo Rosado and adult film star Alicia Class. Meanwhile, viewers watched Willis in the comedy Breakfast of Champions and the melodrama The Story of Us, which tells about a couple trying to save their marriage. It's ironic that during the filming, the actor was going through a divorce. Bruce also starred in the mystery drama The Sixth Sense. You are not a freak, okay? Don't you believe anybody that tries to convince you of that? That's bullshit. You don't have to go through your life believing that. His role in this film brought him not only the audience's love and the critics' respect, but also a grandiose income of 114 million. The actor asked for a percentage of the impressive box office receipts on top of the initial fee. Interestingly, for one of the scenes, Bruce, a lefty, learned to write with his right hand so that it would be more convenient for the camera crew. In 2000, Willis earned $20 million each for roles in the family fantasy The Kid and the superhero thriller Unbreakable. At the same time, the film The Whole Nine Yards was released, but Bruce doubted it would be successful. He even had a bet with his partner on set, Matthew Perry, that if the movie takes first place at the box office in the first week, he would star in Friends for free. As a result, our hero appeared in three episodes of the sitcom, for two of which he still received a payout, but transferred it to charity. He also won an Emmy Award for Outstanding Guest Actor in a Comedy Series. In 2001, the actor presented the film Bandits and the third music album, which never gained fame. In the following years, he voiced in the cartoon Rugrats Go Wild and starred in the film's Hearts War with a payout of $22.5 million. True West, Grand Champion, The Whole Ten Yards, and Tears of the Sun. While filming in the latter, Bruce was injured because of a pyrotechnic error. A projectile hit the actor in the forehead. After that, Willis sued the producers for negligent treatment. But our hero bought a new prosthetic leg for one of the extras who didn't have a leg for $20,000 since the old one was worn out during the filming in the jungle. At that time, among Bruce's girlfriends were models Rachel Hunter and Emily Sandberg, actress Nadia Bjorlin, and allegedly the star of the TV series Sex and the City, Kim Cattrall. He even wanted to marry another actress, Brooke Burns, but it never came to the wedding. Around the same time, our hero got his famous bald head. Rather, he started losing his hair at 30 and even got an expensive transplant, but it was in vain. Then, the actor gave in and decided to shave his head. After a short break, Bruce returned to the screens in 2005 with the action movie Hostage, together with his daughter Rumor and the crime drama Sin City. Angina, he calls it. I'm polishing my badge and getting myself used to the idea of saying goodbye to it. It and the 30 odd years of protecting and serving and tears and blood and terror. Then the actor starred in the films Alpha Dog, Lucky Number Slevin, Fast Food Nation, 16 Blocks, and the cartoon Over the Hench. In 2007, he added several works to his filmography, like the thriller Perfect Stranger, the action horror Planet Terror, as well as Live Free or Die Hard. You know what you get for being a hero? Nothing. Get shot at. Get a little pat on the back, blah, blah, blah. Atta boy. In the continuation of the story about John McClane, Bruce Willis performed most of the stunts on his own and received $25 million for it. This was followed by the films Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Assassination of a High School President, Surrogates, Red, The Expendables, and the comedy thriller Cop Out, for which Bruce agreed to a significantly lower payout. Meanwhile, there have been changes in his personal life. He decided to settle down, and in March 2009, he married model and actress Emma Hemming. Willis admitted that he fell in love with the woman on the very first day of their relationship and became much happier with Emma in his life. Two more daughters were born in this marriage, Mabel and Evelyn. In the early 10s, Willis starred in such films as Set Up, Catch 44, Lay the Favorite, The Cold Light of Day, Moonrise Kingdom, The Expendables 2, 
buyer with buyer and the fantasy dystopian thriller Looper. The latter was received by critics with great enthusiasm. So even when we're apart, you can remember what I do after I do it? Yes, but this is a precise description of a fuzzy mechanism. The actor's next projects were G.I. Joe, Retaliation, A Good Day to Die Hard, Red 2, and Sin City, A Dame to Kill For. From that moment on, Bruce Willis focused on action movies, most of which didn't become popular, so such movies as The Prince, Vice, Extraction, Marauders, and Death Wish had a rather lukewarm reception. Among numerous action films, the comedy Rock the Casbah of 2015 stands out as well as the appearance of Willis in the post credit scene in the psychological thriller Split. But the highest rated film for several years was Edward Norton's detective Motherless Brooklyn, released in 2019. There are two of you come upstairs. Back me up quick. What's going down here, Frank? I gotta keep this under my hat, boys. Fat cats and hats. Them's the ones, pal. Let's catch a big score and get fat ourselves. In the same year, Bruce voiced in the cartoon The Lego Movie 2, the second part, and also starred in the third sequel to the films Unbreakable and Split, the thriller Glass. Then, with rare exceptions, the actor's filmography would consist exclusively of action films, and often all the scenes with him were shot in one day, for example in Acts of Violence, Out of Death, and American Siege. In them, Willis usually appears at the beginning of the film but then disappears. The explanation for this was revealed in 2022 when Bruce's daughter, Rumor, reported that her father suffered from aphasia, a form of dementia that affects cognitive functions. In some movies, for example, Glass, the actor's lines were cut short because it was becoming increasingly difficult for him to remember them. For this reason, Willis ended his career and started spending time surrounded by family. He is regularly visited by his ex-wife Demi, with whom they remained close friends after the divorce. They even have a tradition of getting together with the children during the Christmas holidays and having a pajama party with board games. In 2022, the actor participated in such action films as Gasoline Alley, Wire Room, Wrong Place, Paradise City, Two Parts of Detective Night, and others. In January 2023, viewers saw Willis in the action thriller Detective Knight, Independence, and soon the crime thriller Soul Assassin will be released. At one time, Bruce attended cooking classes for several months to please his daughters with delicious homemade dishes, and now they surround Dad with care and love, enjoying every moment together. By the way, the eldest daughter of Willis and Moore, Rumor, followed in her parents' footsteps and became an actress, and soon she will become a mother for the first time. Scout and Tallulah have also starred in films. All three girls used alcohol and other psychoactive substances from an early age but were able to fight off the addiction. The actor's younger children are still in school. Because of Bruce's condition, the media began to talk more often about his legacy. They write that he bequeathed his entire fortune, estimated at $250 million, to his current family, and each of the daughters from a previous marriage can get only a million dollars. In addition to film royalties, Bruce received income from advertising contracts. In the 80s, he collaborated with the alcohol brand Seagram and received $7 million for it, but broke off the contract when he gave up drinking. However, in 2009, our hero agreed to become the face of the vodka brand in exchange for owning 3.3% of the company's shares. In the following year, the actor advertised Subaru and Honda cars, the Nike sports brand, and car batteries, starring in the commercial as John McClane. The announcement that Willis has sold the rights to his digital image became big news, but his representatives denied the rumors. Bruce is the co-founder of a production company that has worked on many projects with his participation, and in 2001, he opened his own recording studio to help young musicians and used to be a co-owner of the Planet Hollywood chain of restaurants. Not all investments were successful, so in the thousands, the celebrity invested about $2 million in the technology for the environmentally friendly recycling of old tires, but soon decided to withdraw the investment. The actor had to get his money back through the court. Bruce Willis's affairs in Haley, Idaho were also criticized. In 1988, he and Demi Moore bought a ranch there and began investing in local businesses, but they didn't manage it properly and after the divorce, abandoned it altogether. By the way, the actor sold the ranch in 2018 for $5 million. He also got rid of a penthouse in New York worth $18 million, put up for sale a villa in the Turks and Caicos Islands for $33 million, 
and an estate in upstate New York for $13 million. Even earlier in 2014, Bruce sold his Beverly Hills mansion for $16.5 million, while he had bought it for $9 million. In addition, after his divorce with Moore, she received a luxury penthouse in New York with a view of Central Park, which the couple bought in 1990 for $7 million. Now, the celebrity lives in Brentwood, California, in a mansion for almost $10 million. The elegant interior of the house combines classics and modernity. Inside, there is a cinema room, sauna, and swimming pool. There's another swimming pool outside, as well as lounge and sports areas. And this is not a complete list of the properties owned by Willis. In the thousands, for example, he built a villa on the Caribbean islands, and after filming the movie Hearts War, he fell in love with Prague so much that he bought a whole five-story house there. As for cars, Bruce's heart belongs to the American brands. Over the years, he accumulated an impressive collection that includes Dodge Charger, Chevrolet Bel Air Nomad, Shelby GT500, Chevrolet 3100 pickup truck, several Chevrolet Corvette models from different years, a Lincoln Town Car Limousine and Pontiac Firebird 400. Most of the cars were sold at auctions, and the most expensive one turned out to be a Bentley Continental GT Speed Le Mans edition with a mileage of only 2,552 kilometers. Willis also auctioned off five motorcycles and sent the proceeds to help American soldiers and veterans. By the way, Bruce was one of the few Hollywood stars who supported the war in Iraq. He even came to the area of military operations and performed songs for the soldiers. After that, he even wanted to serve himself but did not pass by age. And in 2007, he offered a million dollars to anyone who could find and neutralize Osama bin Laden. The actor also advocated for the right to bear arms and supported almost all candidates from the Republican Party. The exception was Bob Dole, who ran for the President of the United States as the politician criticized Demi Moore for her role in the film Striptease. Bruce Willis played his most famous role in Die Hard, but his filmography is not limited to just that. And what film with this actor is your favorite? If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.